Okay, um, just to recap what was covered in the previous video, um, these numbers, the way they were introduced in the beginning of the course is, I said these were um, a measure of average atomic mass, and I said the units were AMU. And what I'm telling you is that people reuse these numbers. Chemists reuse these numbers. They swapped out this unit and they said, look, we can reuse this number and every once in a while, if we need to, we can use the unit of grams. People know that one gram is about the weight of one paper clip. And we can say that 1.0079 grams of hydrogen atoms is this many hydrogen atoms. 4.0026 grams of helium is that many helium atoms. So there's a way of converting between grams and how many of an atom you have. And it's not just hydrogen and helium you can do this with. You can use these numbers in any of the uh, 118 elements in the periodic table. So you can do it for any of them. I realize that, uh, at least for, for a lot of you, this is a difficult idea. This is a, a weird number. This is, has a different name. It's called one mole of things. Um, and because it's weird enough, we're going to sort of do drills on it. We're going to talk about this. Um, that's what this video is about. It's, it's to just practice. So again, here's a little bit of practice. Um, if I have 10.08, uh, I'm sorry, 10.811 grams of boron atoms, then I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 boron atoms. If I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms, how much does it weigh? It weighs 12.011 grams. And so these numbers and this number are interconvertible. Um, but you have to be able to look up these numbers in the periodic table to do the conversion. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. We're going to do some drills. So uh, here we go. Um, chemistry uses uh, doesn't chemistry does not use the the dozen because twelve atoms of something because twelve atoms of something is um, it's just not enough to to be usable by humans. It's not enough to weigh out on a scale. It's just not useful. Instead of the dozen, chemistry uses this weird term called the mole. That's six point zero two times ten to the twenty three group uh, six point zero two times ten to the twenty three of something. It's about equal to this number. As I mentioned, there are other digits here. Um, some of the digits are known, but it's not known. We don't know all of the digits, actually. There are people who, uh, for whatever reason, um, still work on this, trying to find out the extra digits. But um, it's taken a long time just to get you know, three or four more digits. As far as we're concerned, it's just going to be about 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Uh, mole does not refer to the furry creature under your lawn. It comes from the German word for molecule, which is shown there. Um, so here, come the, here comes the drill. I went to the store and I bought a mole of jelly beans. How many jelly beans did I buy? Well, you can pause and think about that, but it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 jelly beans. Now, this may seem silly, and it kind of is, um, but I'm just trying to get you accustomed to this number. I went to the store and I bought one mole of sodium atoms. How many sodium atoms did I buy? Well, I bought 6.02 times 10 to the 23 sodium atoms. Don't worry, it's going to get more difficult. I went to the store and I bought a dozen Toyota Corollas, and I actually want to ask two questions. How many cars did I buy? And the second question is written. How many wheels did I buy? How many wheels did I buy? I bought a dozen of them. So I bought 12 cars. I bought 12 Corollas. How many wheels did I buy? Assuming that there's no spare, it's going to be 12 times 4 because there's 4 wheels per car. And that's 48 wheels. Again, this might not seem too difficult to you because, well, 12 is a reasonable number to wrap your head around, 4 is a reasonable number to wrap your head around, but this type of 
question is going to show up with moles in a little bit. So I'm trying again to get you in the right frame of mind. I've thought a lot about this, probably more than I should have, uh, as far as why. The idea behind moles is difficult, and I can come up with three reasons. One, it's a weird number that people don't think about very often. It's a huge number, right? And it's almost always written in scientific notation because it's too big to write in conventional form. Because it's in scientific notation, this tends to confuse people in calculations. But it's just a number like any other number. Um, uh, sometimes I, I feel like the questions are phrased poorly with respect to mole questions. I will do my best to phrase them as clearly as possible, but again, you know, nobody's perfect, so I'm shooting for perfection, but probably going to miss. Um, and the other thing is that putting these numbers into your calculator is not always the easiest thing to do, and so you have to be able to type this number into your calculator and use it in calculations to get the correct answers. So that's in addition to it being a weird number, you actually have to use it. So that, that's another thing that makes it difficult. So if you can tackle those three things, or at least if I can help you tackle the second point, and you tackle the first and third, you know, maybe we make some progress. Okay. More drills. I have one mole of hydrogen atoms. How many atoms do I have? Well, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. I have two moles of hydrogen atoms. Well, oh, something changed here. And everything I asked you before with respect to moles was one mole. Now I have two moles of hydrogen atoms. How many hydrogen atoms do I have? Well, I have this number times two because I have two sets of this number. So it's going to be two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. Unfortunately, you're not going to see the answer written this way you have to be able to multiply this out either in your head or on a piece of paper or on a calculator and and come up with the answer that I'm gonna show you um, if you do this on your calculator you're and if you do it correctly on your calculator you should get 1.204 times 10 to the 24 and the the unit would be hydrogen atoms so two times this number two times uh, Avogadro's number is 1.204 times 10 to the 24. So if I told you I have two moles of hydrogen atoms, how many hydrogen atoms do I have? The, the correct answer would be 1.204 times 10 to the 24 hydrogen atoms. So uh, again, we're, we're sort of changing things a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm varying the number of moles now. Um, for those of you who are connoisseurs of significant digits, this uh, n is not correctly rounded, but um, but I don't give a crap, so uh, let's keep going. That's good enough. I will not mark you wrong if you do not m round correctly. I have 3.2 moles of hydrogen atoms. How many hydrogen atoms do I have? Well, I have to have 3.2 times as much as 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. In other words, I have 3.2 sets of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. What this is in scientific notation, if you punch it out, is some other number. So I'm going to punch this out on my calculator just so that you can sort of play along at home. And I get 1.9264 times 10 to the 24 H atoms. So you're going to have to be able to do this. You're going to have to be able to take 3.2 and multiply it by this number, which is sometimes called Avogadro's number. And this would be your answer. This would be waiting for you on a quiz or a test where I would expect you to be able to write it out this way. If you wrote it out this way, if it was a fill in the blank or something like that, I would probably give you credit, but um, if it's multiple choice, you're definitely not going to see this as a possible answer. You're going to see this as a possible answer. Here's a, a very different question. Um, I have 1 times 10 to the 23 hydrogen atoms. How many, um, how many moles of hydrogen atoms do I have? This question is basically phrased backwards from all of the others. Up here, I gave you moles, 
gave moles asked how many. Down here, I give you how many and ask for moles. So you can uh, pause and try to figure this out. Um, I tend to do it this way. So if you unpause, I will show you what I would do. I would say 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms is one mole of H atoms. So I'm writing this as a ratio or a fraction if you want. Then I would say, but I don't have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms in my question. I only have 1 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. So I want to know how many moles of H atoms I have. And I set these two fractions equal to each other. I can cross multiply. I can multiply these two things together and set them equal to these two things. And so let me do that on a different slide or well, let me do that somewhere else. Okay, this setup here is the same as what I had on the, on the slide uh, earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross, multiply, and solve for x. So let's cross these two first. One mole of H atoms times 1 times 10 to the 23, excuse me, H atoms equals these two numbers multiplied together. 6.02 times 10 to the 23 H atoms times x moles of h atoms. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what this x is all by itself. We want to get rid of this ugly number that's attached to it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide this side by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 h atoms. And if we do that, the h atoms unit goes away. 6.02 times 10 to the 23 on top, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 on the bottom. That reduces down to 1. So we have the x all by itself. However, if we divide this side by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 h atoms, and we want to keep both sides equal, we have to do the same thing to the left side. So we also have to divide this side by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 h atoms h atom unit in the top, h atom unit in the bottom, they cancel away. The only unit we're left with is moles of h atoms, here it is, and the only thing we have on the right is x moles of h atoms. So one mole of h atoms, that's coming from there, times 1 times 10 to the 23, this unit went away, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is equal to x moles of h atoms. And if you do this out, if you multiply and divide everything out there, you're going to get 0 0.166 moles of h atoms has and I'm just going to write this extra stuff, uh, has one, point, 1 times 10 to the 23 H atoms. So that was not the most elegantly phrased statement, but what it, this is saying is if I have 1 times 10 to the 23 hydrogen atoms, I have 0 0.166 moles of hydrogen atoms. And hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Um, this number here, it's less than one mole of stuff. This number here, 1 times 10 to the 23, which is what we were trying to convert to moles, this number is less than 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which means whatever this answer was going to be in moles, it had to be less than one mole. And we got a number that was less than a mole. We got 0.166 moles. So the reason I point this out is we did this very complicated uh, calculation or this complicated looking calculation 
but if you came out with a number that was bigger than a mole, you should at least conduct what I call a sanity test, see if you went insane, because we know that this number, weird as it is, is smaller than this number. So this x, it better be smaller than 1. And we got less than 1. We got 0.166. So at least by that measure, we did not go insane. So just to summarize, 1 times 10 to the 23 h atoms is 0 0.166 moles of h atoms. And that's the answer here. Approximately 0 0.166 moles of H atoms. So that's about it. Um, that's probably enough to digest for the moment. We might do one more page of drills in a little bit. But, you know, go have a beer. Or, or not. <laughs>